you guys, it's me, Bowler Dash. Um, and I am here recording myself. Uh, recording myself translate uh, the preview for this game rebalance patch that will be released for Gundam Online on the 27th of May. Um, it's a preview of it. So they they don't have specific details as in the numbers, the, you know, the exact amounts that'll be changed on the units and weapons and stuff, but um, yeah, I usually post this stuff on the Skype chat that I've created to update uh, Gundam Online players on like uh, the patches and updates and changes that the, the game makes that they, uh, you know, uh, post up in Moonspeak that most of you guys can't read, so I just kind of go and uh, do all those translations work for the people that are trying to play this game through the VPNs and whatevers. But yeah, I'm like super tired today. I will be typing all this crap out, but I'm not, because I just don't have the strength to, like, I, I don't know, <laughs> change moon runes into, like, words with keyboard right now, so I'm just gonna go through and uh, we're gonna talk about this stuff. I'm gonna translate this for you. And maybe when they actually release the patch and, and give out numbers, I might record that too, I don't know. But anyway, um, the first thing is the, uh, the battle assist module patching. Um, they're adding new modules, but these modules will be unique to certain suits, kind of like uh, like the modules that the Shimatsunaga, Gelgoog, and uh, more than other guys. I'm tired, so it's the only one that I can think of right now. Uh, I think uh, what uh, Johnny Raidenzaku has that uh, you know unique module. So uh, a bunch of suits, mostly these are. Uh, uh, I think. These look like the suits you get from the uh, the exchange tickets. Looks like they're getting a unique module. So we're gonna go and uh, talk about what they're being, what's being added, and uh, what benefits they provide. So first for the Federation, HQ and Bulgu, the the GM custom uh, burning custom, Lieutenant Burning custom. He gets a unique module called the is this, uh, <laughs> demonic. Demonic Instructor. <laughs> That's what he is. Uh, and it bestows on the GM Custom Burning Type the ability to switch weapons faster. Its weapon switch time will be reduced with this module activated. And they'll, they'll, all these modules will be automatically activated. I don't think they can be removed. Uh, but it's saying they're increasing the number of slots on the suit on these suits. Uh, so that um, you know the, the, the number of available slots that you can use on you know regular modules aren't affected by these suits by these modules that are not removable. So anyway, the GM cust custom burning type is getting that. The uh, the mass production gun cannon. Uh, I forgot to turn Skype off. Uh, whatever. Uh, mass production gun cannon of the white dingo dingo. Uh, Team is getting the uh, this thing is called the uh, this is uh, what single blow in a flash. So my, my translations of these like cool words are gonna be horrible. I'm gonna make like cool J Japano words sound stupid. I'm gonna have to excuse me. It sounds cool in Japanese, just doesn't come out right in English. But I'm sure there's a way to make it sound cool, but I just can't do it. I'm just gonna translate it word for word. Alright, so anyway, uh, the White Dingo Gun Cannon. Uh, currently hated by Xeon for its ability to uh, instant switch from charging beam shot into its, uh, into its dual cannons. Uh, which can fire both direct fire and howitzer rounds. And, it can equip the charging beam, howitzer, and direct fire all three weapons in one same blow. So you can like go from charging beam, knock down a knock, knock down a you know a zaku with his charging beam, and out of the air, and while it's falling, switch to direct fire, hit it, and then like while that's that shot is traveling, it can instant switch to howitzers and then lob a howitzer 
at the falling duck and insta kill it. The white dingo gun cannon can do this. And now it can do it better from further range because uh, its weapon recoil uh, dampener will be improved. So, uh, so, that, so it, it, its weapon has less recoil with this module activated. That's fantastic. Next is the uh, GM Cannon of the 4th uh, MS team. Its module is the, uh, the Immortal 4th MS team. Um, and with it, when it, it is uh, revived, it gets more armor back. Normally, a suit only recovers half of its armor after it, it's revived once it's been uh, destroyed. The Immortal 4th MS team's GM Cannon will get more. It doesn't specify how much. Maybe they'll do it uh, on... on uh, maybe they'll say on update day. Um, Gundam Easy 8. Uh, last resort. This one was easy. Because it's in uh, English. Lasto Resorto. It's funny because resort in Japanese means like vacation resort <laughs> it's rarely used as the like the resort that this implies as in like the last opportunity to do something so this actually sounds like the last vacational resort place <laughs> anyway um, this thing also uh, gets more armor back when it's revived from uh, knocked down or you know knocked out destroyed when it's counting down to its uh, until it's sent to limbo but also it's got uh, it uh, recovers ammunition when it gets a confirmed kill uh, kind of like Sh Shima Gelgug's uh, unique module I guess um, I guess that's cool Especially since the EZ-8 carries like Mozilla Top, I think, right? And and uh, rockets, uh, and you go through ammo on those weapons pretty fast. So this is actually a good uh, module for this thing, I would assume. Okay. Um, the this is the. Mass production gun cannon, uh, wolf type, and its module is the the dancing black god of death. You know them shinigamis. <laughs> anyway, um, Okay, well this is a very simple, but uh, very, uh, what's it called, beneficial ability. It's, it's bazooka and howitzer damage is improved with this module activated. That's nice, additional damage is always good, that means uh, because, well, does, the, does the wolf type gun cannon, does it fire F type that deals 700 damage, or was it 80, 850? Well, regardless, it deals more damage. And more damage is always good on bazooka types. Um, because that means that uh, even if you don't get a direct hit, as long as the damage that the splash deals is within the, uh, the balance threshold of the thing you're shooting, you'll get the stun. In which then you can like combo into other weapons. So that's good, I guess. And then the uh, this is the GM sniper custom uh, for young 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 type, um, and his module is the Gexio. What is that? That is like the king of shooting down things. <laughs> That's what his module is. Um, accuracy and recoil is improved with this module. That's cool. 
Now, all these suits, I'm no yeah, I'm noticing these. Right, did I say this already? They're from the exchange tickets. The, all these suits you can get from the exchange tickets. Uh, I think these three you can get with 30 exchange tickets, and these three you get with 50. Actually, no, this is a uh, EX... EX suit. EX gacha suit. I don't remember where you get this. I think this is also uh, an exchange ticket suit. Either way, these are suits that you don't get through normal means. You know, through uh, repetitive spending of GP and not wanting anything type suits. These are uh, suits you get from events and uh, doesn't um, play 30 games or 30 days or 50 days type suits. So they're getting more unique. Urgh. That's cool, I guess. Alright, so the Principality of Xeon, uh, Makube Goof, uh, his module is the... This is gonna take a long, a long time, I already spent 10 minutes on this, I need to speed it up when I'm tired. Uh, this is the, 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 the vase from... from a place in China. <laughs> Wherever this place is. Um, I can actually look it up, I don't feel like it. This is, I think it was Hoxo? Hoxo? There's a place in China? Anyway, uh, it, it uh, makes Makube Goose heat rod stun longer. Neat. I think I'm just gonna like just go down and pop my extra comments out just so we can get through this. I'll add in the comments when they're necessary or when I think it, it'll add something. The Black Tristar High Mobility Zaku 2. Uh, it, it's. Module is the the black tri stars uh, weapon switch time uh, improved. That's actually cool. Uh, means I'm switching from my uh, bazooka to machine gun faster. It also means I might be able to take the the modules that's already making its weapon switch time faster and then replace it with something better. That's I was kind of hoping for something more, but I guess it'll do. It's better than nothing. It's not Black Tristar like though. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. What the fuck do I know about Gundam? Alright, so Zaku can grade and type. Uh, his module is the... Uh... The... Like, the... Uh, the resemblance of a new type, I guess. The... The signs of a new type. Makes more sense. The signs of a new type. This is a module, and with it, well, see, this is actually kind of ties into what it's called. Uh, he automatically can on on the on the map. There's there's a module that you can put on your uh, howitzer suits that shows you the estimated spot where the howitzer will land, the shot will land on the map, the way you have it pointed, and the way you have it you know, facing. Uh, Great in type Saku Cannon automatically get this, gets this. Um, I guess that's cool. I, I never use this thing though because I think it's stupid and useless. You can kind of guesstimate where your shot's gonna land. But uh, for those that rely on it, now you don't. You can take that module off because Great comes with it already. Um, it doesn't really add like any like. Combat functions, uh, close range combat functions to the Graden type. So, you know, I'm not sure if this is worth it. Anyway, like I said, better than nothing. Uh, Sharzaku. Uh, I can see the enemy too, is his macho. I think he says it in reply to. To, you know, like new types. Like new types can see enemies that they can't see with their eyes. I think Sharzaku says this sometime in the, in the, in the show. That, you know, oh, I can sense the enemy too. I must be turning into a new type type phrase. Anyway, uh, this improves his accuracy and recoil. Is that useful? I don't know how that... See, that doesn't tie together. 
the name of the module and the abilities. It's stupid. But you know, that means that my uh, Type F machine guns are more accurate. It has a tighter spread. That's good. That means he's he'll be more effective at slightly longer ranges. I don't dislike this module. I think it's pretty useful. Okay, uh, the Raiden Galgo Cannon gets the Crimson Lightning module. Uh, he gets less uh, recovery time, well, okay, let me start, recovery time upon landing stun is reduced. In this game, when you land your mobile suit on the ground, it is incapable of doing anything for like, like a quarter of a second. That time is reduced on the riding Galgo cannon. That's more useful than you'd think. That means that when you land, you can go go to his uh, sniper cannon faster. Um, and that's useful, I think. And in red here, it's saying that on update day. All modules that you have uh, saved, like all, all setups that you have saved, uh, which has modules, uh, setups saved in it, will be uh, reset on update day to, I don't know, uh, accommodate these changes, I guess. So like, you know, if you have multiple setups of different uh, module loadouts it'll all be the modules will be reset as in they'll be removed from the setup on update day so like if you have like same weapon loadouts but different module loadouts for whatever reasons I mean I do for certain maps and stuff long range or short range maps require different modules uh, well you know you, you before it's uh, deleted you might want to like write them down so you can reset it up the way you had it. I might do that, but I probably won't because I'm uh, I'm a lazy ass. That's why I am recording this instead of typing it all out right now because I'm tired and I don't feel like typing. Okay, going down. Um. Uh, changes to traits. One. Uh, a single trait in particular, the quick switch trait, will be uh, messed with. The following changes will be made to the quick switch trait. Currently, uh, weapon switch time on weapons. Uh, switch time between uh, weapons is reduced. After the patch, not only will it do that, uh, the damage will be increased to the weapon you switch to for a for a duration it's kind of vague doesn't really say how long it'll last right now maybe on update date they'll, they'll specify they'll be more uh, uh, specific but this sounds pretty decent uh, the one suit that comes to mind is uh, that'll benefit from this is um, you know the, the the blue Zaku 2, the VG Zaku, or any other suit that has this ability uh, that can switch to like a bazooka type weapon. Um, the black uh, or not the black, the blue Zaku has the. Uh, the bazooka to Mozilla top combo. So it's Mozilla top. I'm guessing this duration won't be very long. I guess so. Like the first shot of the Mozilla top, if you can hit with it, will deal more damage. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, my uh, artillery Zaku. I think that my silver pair of the artillery Zaku has quick switch module. So like, if I go from BZ to shotgun, like my first shot of the shotgun might deal more damage. That means I have to land my like first shots after a weapon switch. That requires aim. Aim I do not have. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can make good use of this module, or this trait. But, 
for those pro guys that can land all their shots. This module sounds like a benefit now. Oh, you know who gets this? Freaking, um... Goof Custom. So, like... You can go from Heat Rod... And then... Go from Heat Rod to Sword, and the Sword will deal more damage. That sounds pretty epic. Anyway, so... This this sounds kind of exciting. It sounds like, uh... There will be a lot to... Uh, a bunch of suits with the quick switch trait that can be like experimented with. Post patch. Cool. Uh, in regards to headshot hitboxes, changes. Uh, the following suits will have headshots removed from their hitbox, so they won't have a headshot hitbox. They won't have a. They won't have heads, essentially. And these are all Xeon suits. The following suits will be won't be able to get headshots. Can't get headshotted. These suits include the Zok, the Ram Zagak, the Zagak, the Zagak E, the Hygog, the Gog, the Juog, and the Juog artillery type. It's been a long time coming. The Ak guy already got this a long time ago. It's a uh, head. Hit, hit box was removed because its head is like three fourths of its body. Now these suits, I think their head is like slightly smaller, like half of their body. So like 50% of the time you're hitting one of these suits, you're hitting it in the head. Now you're not. That might make the Zok the Zok last longer. I doubt it'll be useful though. Still, Zok is a pretty bad suit right now because of how slow it is, and how slow that freaking charging beam cannon charges. That's good news for my Zigok, though. The Hygok. I wish, I wish some of its hitboxes were removed, period. Not just its headshot hitbox, because the Hygok is humongous. It's got like these giant shoulder pauldrons that aren't necessary. Just makes it take damage easier. Sounds like a good thing for the Juog, though. Alright, so those changes. Um, uh, uh, this is uh, stat changes. Uh, the following suits uh, stat parameters will be edited in the following fashions. First, uh, for the Federation, Earth Federation Space Forces. Um, the ground GM, the ground type GM. I think this is the the, the 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 support class one. Its armor will be improved. Doesn't say by how much. It'll most likely tell us on update day. But its armor will be improved. The uh, armor upgraded. GM. Its armor and weight load will be improved. The weight load is pretty important. That means it might get that uh, balance bonus so that it can boost longer. Because that's what it's supposed to excel at. It's supposed to be like all fast and maneuverable. Currently not fast enough. Okay, this is the GM commander type. Uh, boost charge will be improved. Okay, boost charge improvements are always welcome on a melee type suit. The GM commander type gets the two beam sabers, which makes it a melee type suit. Though it uses a funny. Okay. Alright, All right, this is the ground GM assault type. It's getting armor along you know, with its support class. Bro. Same changes. Gun tank 2, getting more armor. Uh, this is the ground Gundam with the container armament set up. It's also getting more armor. Uh, mass production gun cannon armor. Uh, GM commander, GM commando is armor, and its speed will be improved. Max speed will be improved. Okay. GM striker armor. GM commando light armor is not armor, but speed boost, max speed boost. Well, that's cool. Yeah, currently, like, the light armor types in the game aren't fast enough <laughs> to warrant their lack of armor. They're still too slow. And, uh, 
Let's hope these light armor guys get a bigger speed bonus. Power GM gets armor. And weight load improvement. Power GM was, is really lacking in the weight load department. It's easy to knock down. Just, just change. I think it's a good thing. Depending on how much of an improvement they're willing to give it. Like, uh, I try using the Power GM uh, for Xeon's. Uh, the Xeon gets it as a captured suit. You know, it's once, uh, once per game suit. I can only use it once. Uh, but it, it falls down. Because it's weighed down with all this on this, all the, the, like the machine gun. It gets, it gets like a machine gun that it doesn't need. Uh, I think it's melee is type D. It's heavy. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the worst of, the worst thing about it is that it's weight load. It's, it just gets knocked down by whatever it gets hit by. So this improvement is a good thing. Blue Destiny uh, Unit 1 Balance, or did the weight load improvement. Pale Rider, weight load. Gundam Prototype Unit 1 gets recoil time improved. Uh, the Gundam Prototype Unit 1 with the full Vernian loadout gets recoil time improved. Uh, the Gun Cannon heavy armament loadout set up like type D <laughs> uh, can now go into space I don't want to see this shit in space fucking a blue shitty ass gun cannon okay so now it's space capable sucks to be Zeon okay alright for the for the uh, principality of Zeon the following suits we got its stats messed with. Uh, the Zaku JC. This is the support class Zaku. Uh, Zaku 2. Gets more armor. The Zigok gets a boost charge bonus. Interesting. I, the, the Zigok already has high enough boost charge, in my opinion. And now it gets more. That's excellent. That means I can just... I can move around even more in the Zigok. Okay, the Zonk gets... Motherfucking A. Uh, gets boost cap bonus. The fuck? What good is that? All these fu motherfuckers gets all this armor, and the Zonk gets left out getting boost cap bonus. Stupid game. The Zonk needs more armor. But I mean, I guess technically it is getting more armor, quote unquote, because it's getting his headshots removed. Okay. The Juon gets more armor, though. <laughs> The Jog tells the Zog, oh, I'm getting more armor, what about you? Zog just kind of looks down at the ground. Sad. Okay. The Zuda gets mass, max speed bonus, or max speed improved. Uh, I guess, uh, like, it's uh, Federation counterpart, you know, the light armors. Because the Zuda can, like, freaking, uh, freaking, what's that thing? Blow itself up. But uh, I hope they give it a decent speed bonus, and not like a dinky speed bonus. Uh, but yeah, the, the speed bonus, if it's good enough on the Zuda, would mean that you might get more a better chance of suicide bombing into something. Currently, it's really difficult to use the, the what's that, uh, the Saturn engine? I think, was it Neptune, Saturn, one of them planet engines? Uh, it's, it's like the Zuda's unique ability is that uh, even when it goes into overheat, it can still continue to boost at the cost of uh, your hit points. It drains hit points instead of your boost bar. And once your hit points reach zero while boosting, you explode in this huge explosion. And you deal damage to your to, to surrounding enemies. Now you might be able to get in position to blow yourself up more often. Cause I, I, I can't for my life do this. It's, usually get shot down before you can fly into an enemy. Uh, or you like tend to blow yourself up on accident because like you'll be using your overdrive and then some some tiny bit of splash damage will like make you miscalculate how much hit points you have left and then you blow up. Alright anyway, 
It's a Zaka 2F artillery type. Oh, one of my favorites. Gets max speed improved. That's awesome. Oh, what, what'd I do? See, I'm tired, so I'm hitting random buttons on the keyboard. Or on my mouse. Uh, okay. Um, and its jump capabilities will be improved. What the fuck that means? So it could hop, skip, and jump better after the patch. It sounds all good to me. More mobility on my Zaka 2F artillery type is thumbs up in my book. Because I use this thing not to artillery, but I use it to just fuck Gundams up in the face with its shotgun. The more I can jump, the more I can meet the Gundams in the air and shotgun his face. And on its way down, I shotgun him in the balls. And then I will step on him. And I will crush him on my Zaka 2F artillery post patch. Looking forward to it. The Zaka 2 FS gets more armor! Wow, okay. Uh, and boost charge. I swear the Zaka 2 FS has never gotten nerfed in the history of its existence in this game. It's always been a good suit, and it just. they're improving it. I'm guessing uh, the dev team wants to keep this thing as like the grunt suit for Xeon. And I think they're trying by giving it more armor. One of one of one of the biggest disadvantages that Zaku 2 FS has is its lack of armor. It's got all sorts of excellent stats, and its uh, weapon selections is super awesome. But it just it doesn't have any armor. Now it's getting more. Uh, I mean that's that's good, but it's like taking away its major characteristic. <laughs> you know, it's supposed to be like a, uh, I, I, I'm, I think it like, you know, like a, like a, one of them, like the, the female, a female fighter in a fight, in a fighting game is like the Zaku 2 FS. It's like fast and it deals lots of damage, but it doesn't have a lot of hit points. But, uh, now it's getting more, but I guess it's getting more to keep up with like the other suits, so it still has no armor, but more than, you know, it had before. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm all good with having more armor on my Zaku 2 FS. The Dom Cannon single cannon armament gets more armor. This is the uh, artillery's Dom Cannon. Okay, and the Dom Cold Climate type gets more armor. We should have got more speed or something. Or boost charge. But okay. Uh, Dom Cannon. This is the, the Dom Cannon. Oh, I think was well, one of these is like the ones you can only get from by buying like the, the the games like unique or official controller or something. But anyway, it's both both Dom Cannon types gets more armor. The Goof Custom gets more armor. That's good. Uh, the Gundam Unit Two or pro, the Gundam uh, the GPO Two gets more armor and Boost Cap. How much more armor? I wish. I wish it was said Gundam Prototype Unit 2 gets leaner. Uh, cuts down on the junk food. Smaller hitbox, smaller smaller profile is what this thing needs. Uh, but I guess more armor makes up for it. Depends on how much more armor. But currently, it is kind of silly though. Like the Gundam GPO 2, you know, is, is seen as like this super armored Hulk that carries an atomic bazooka. But like, currently, the Zaku Cannon gets more hit points than the Unit Two. Silly. <laughs> like my my Zaku Two F artillery type gets more hit points than this. But it does have that shield. But the shield is meh. Anyway, moving along. Uh, weapon stat changes is this list uh, for the. Earth Federation. Uh, the following suits uh, will have some of its weapons functions changed. Um, and I need a drink of water. Alright, first up in the list is um, this is the GM Cold Climate type. Its grenade launchers will get more ammo. I think max uh, 
ammo, the, the amount of ammo it carries, not in the magazine. Okay, so it gets more reloads. Okay, and I was actually reading this before, and this is something that I thought should have been... These are changes that I thought should have been in the game in the first place. Uh, but anyway, this change uh, for the GM Cold Climate type and various other suits with weapons that are similar to it, we'll get these changes. Um, it's the weapon switch animation between its Cold Climate type machine gun and its underslung grenade launcher will be removed. Like, currently, uh, the machine gun and the grenade launcher that is attached to the machine gun count as two separate weapons for the GM Cold Climate type. So, when you switch from the machine gun to the grenade launcher, he puts away the machine gun to draw out the machine gun to use the grenade launcher. It's stupid. And I thought. I need to get rid of Skype for a second. These pop ups are bothering me. Um. I thought maybe things are this way because of like limitation to the game, like like the the, pro the programs that make this game just are at, at I don't know generally suck levels, and that uh, they they hard coded dumb shit like weapons have to be separate all the time every day, you know. But seeing this. looks like the game had the capacity to be able to switch between uh, weapons on a single weapon platform without having any kind of switch animation. So this kind of irritates me, but I mean it's it's a positive change, it's a good change, but it's like why why two years since the game you know was launched? So well, why why now? Why why wasn't this released like a year and a half ago? Stupid, but good. Thank you, Bandai Namco. All right, so the GM uh, cannon white dingo type uh, is getting more ammo on its howitzers. Okay. The G-Line Assault Armor. Its Assault Cannon is getting more ammo. Its Assault Shield D-Type uh, is getting changes to the, the dash attack animation and its hitbox. I'm not sure if I ever saw this thing swing its Assault Shield ever. All I know is that it just brings a giant, like, I don't know, glowing popsicle dildo stick to the field and pokes you with it and kills you. Never seen a swing down assault shield before, but may maybe people start using assault shield after this change, depending on how the changes go. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the G-Lane assault armor carries like a, like a beam lance or some shit. It literally is like a giant lance that a cavalry man, you know, doing a joust might carry. This thing carries it on foot, it looks silly. <laughs> It reminds me of a, of, a, of a paladin I played in D&D, because the, the, the DM kept killing its horse. So I told him that, fine, my, my, my dude will just charge the lance. I mean, I got all these lance feats, and I can't use it because you keep killing my fucking horse. Anyway, you guys don't care about D&D. <laughs> You're here for Gundam. <laughs> okay. Uh, the prototype Gundam. Um, it's prototype beam rifle. Uh, uh, oh, it's getting... Okay, it's prototype beam rifle. This is, it's getting buffed and nerfed. Uh, it's damage, reload time, and range will be improved, but it... it it's the... It's max uh, ammo will be reduced. That's not too bad. Looks like the dev team always goes for the ammo count when they when they want to like I don't know when they want to um uh what's that word damn it 
legitimate, legit, no, what, legitimize, legitimize, yeah, legitimize, you know, like a powerful buff by adding like a debuff, and they always go to like ammo count because ammo count don't matter as much. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, uh, more damage on a beam rifle is good. Currently, beam rifles just don't deal enough damage. I wonder if this is. I don't think it's beam rifles, plural. I think it's just the beam rifle type N. Oh no, no, it's Kabuki, so it's types, so all types, all all beam rifle types will get these improvements and this one debuff. Okay, likewise, the four auto beam rifle types will get the same changes for the prototype Gundam. Okay, next up is the full armor Gundam. Just currently being curb stomped by the heavy Gundam because the heavy Gundam is twenty times better than this piece of shit. I think. Um, it's uh, shoulder mounted and I oh know knee mounted and it's uh, multi salvo missile base. We'll get its range improved. Okay. <laughs> That was a change that was needed for the full armor gun, though. It's got all these, like, missiles and stuff that looks cool when you launch it, but it's got no range. It's silliness. Like, y you have to be, like, I don't know, point blank at the enemy to lock onto anything. Um, and because they, like, spread out, you know, like a clustered missile, it goes around the enemy and doesn't hit anything. Why they waited this long to make this change, right? Like, it's, it's, I don't know why. I guess because with the, the release of the heavy Gundam, there is absolutely no need to fly a full armor Gundam. Well, I mean, the full armor Gundam has got the charging beams, but so does every other, like, Federation suit. And those other Federation suits are cheaper, and they move faster, and they don't suck. Well, now, now the full armor Gundam might be used as a missile platform, depending on how these changes go. Okay, the Slave Wraith. Not the slave race, as this thing implies. As the, the, the cut the gun as imply. I keep seeing this as race, but it's a slave wraith. Um, is the blast radius on its flash grenade, chest mounted flash grenade launcher, the blast radius will be improved. Because currently the, the, the chest flasher doesn't do anything. It's funny looking when, when like, I, uh, uh, I play like a Silver Tier game and I see uh, Silver Tier players trying to use a Slave Race's uh, chest flasher. It's just kind of like, you see it coming at you, right? And he like, kind of thrusts his chest out and then launches his little white orb and it just kind of goes, plop, fizz. <laughs> and you're standing there going, what was that? <laughs> and you shoot it and kill it. Uh, maybe the blast radius will improve it, so maybe I'll get flashed by them now. I think I got flashed by it like once in a while. And I was like, what the, what, 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 what is this? Why am I, why am I getting flashed by the Federation? And it was like a random slave wraith that got a lucky chest flasher to hit on me. Okay, because when you get chest flashed by, uh, by a captured Don, you hear that whang sound that the chest flasher makes on it. So you, you know what hits you, but the slave wraith doesn't make any noise. Anyway. The uh, the ground Gundam with the container armament is getting a new weapon, a new new weapon, quote unquote. The uh, the repair pack, the repair pack uh, is currently unique to uh, the high cost support guys on both sides. It's the, what's the the GM Striker two on the Federation and uh, the Zaku Flipper for Zeon. It's like a lunchbox that heals you. And now the the Gundam container type gets it. Makes sense. I mean, carry this giant freaking backpack. I mean, should have room for repair packs in there. All right. Anyway, moving on. It's a 44 minute video already. Fantastic. No one's gonna watch this, but I don't care. Uh, let's see. Where were they? The G line, uh, no armor. The basic frame G line. It's short. It's uh, dual wielding short beam rifles will get its 
rate of fire improved. And that shit fires pretty fast already, it just doesn't deal the damage. Now it fires even faster. Cool. I'm sure I'll be peeing my pants when I get blasted by these things. After patch. Uh, this is the uh, armor upgraded GM. Oh, its shield is getting buffed. Its armor is getting buffed on the shield. And the weight on it is being reduced. So, not only was it getting... Uh, wasn't it getting... Something, something. Am I mistaken? Yeah, it's getting its armor and its weight load improved. Not only that, but its shield is gonna weigh less, which is gone is which is going to uh, affect its weight load uh, in a positive way even more. Sounds good for armor upgraded GM fans. And then things are kind of fun. I mean, they're kind of like DOMs. Uh, they use hover movement. It's unique to the Federation. And I think these things kind of do look cool. So this, these improvements will be pretty good for the, for this GM. So Power GM is also getting more armor and a rate reduction on its shield. It's good. That'll help its balance even more. The Blue Destiny Mark 1. Uh, same sh These are shield changes. Uh, armor and uh, weight improved. The Pale Rider. Same. Its spike shield is getting an armor and the weight load improvement. The Gundam Prototype Unit 1, the GP-01. Oh no. Uh, usage of the... When equipped with the Universal Boost Pod. The Universal Boost Pod's ability is like... Uh, it's like a, it's like an option part you can put on the on the Gundam or the GPO one. When it's equipped, it uh, makes its max speed faster, but it only reaches its max speed in like the first like second or two upon its like initial boost. So like, when you boost with it, it'll go very fast for like a second or two and then it would slow down to like a cruise speed. Right, so now with this change, um, the amount of boost that it, con it consumes with it equipped is reduced. Uh, the amount of boost it consumes in like the, when you start boosting with it. Um, it, it one of the game mechanics in this game is that, uh, when you start boost, you like lose like a chunk of your boost bar before it like uh, before the the boost consumption like steadies into like a you know like a steady drain. It first insta drains a chunk of boost. Uh, you know when you activate boost uh, with the universal boost pod uh, equipped, the initial boost drain is even more than without it to, I guess, make up for the benefit of it going super fast and reaching its max speed super fast, in, you know, in the initial boost. Uh, but that, um, that, uh, that penalty kind of made this universal boost bot kind of useless because it just consumes so much boost and it's hard to control your, your boost bar. <laughs> When letting go of space and then hitting it again it takes huge chunks of boost cap away from you. So like before you know it, when you're trying to dodge shots, you're at a boost with the universal boost pod equipped. But now uh, it might not be useless. Oh, and they're also changing the effect, the special effect when you use the the, the universal boost pod. It might look cooler. It might look armor core like like giant, giant boost flower explosion thing. Guess we'll find out later. Okay, oh my goodness. Oh, wait. oh the principality, at least their, their list is smaller. Uh, 
that guy. It's iron nail type weapons. Uh, it's dash attack animation and hitbox will be uh, edited. Improved. I hope improved. It doesn't specify, so it'll be patched. The same with uh, one of these suits. This. The assault shield type D, right? On the G line assault armor. It'll be patched, it'll be edited. Doesn't say for good or for better or worse. Yeah, guys, hitbox for its iron nail melee sucks. Except for type D. Type D, he does the headbutt, and the headbutt has a hitbox along all of its like frontal, like uh, frontal profile. Like, not only does it have the hitbox on its head, it has it on its arms and shoulders, I think, too. Which makes it a decent melee, but it's just short range. I wonder what changes he'll bring to this. Maybe his other melees will be useful. But nobody else uses the other melees, because the headbutt looks the coolest. Not only that, it's also the most effective. Uh, it's Unfortunately, I don't see Zigak in here. I would like to see his Iron Nail improve, but not, not this day. Fuck you, Bandai. Alright, next up is the uh, the high mobility Gelgu Vincent type. All oh, right, this is uh, same thing as the Cold Climate GM. Gets more ammo on its grenade launchers, and uh, the weapon switch animation remove when you switch between beam rifle to grenade launcher because they're they're on one weapon. Also, from beam right to full auto beam rifle to grenade launcher, no weapon switch animation. Okay, I'm not sure if that'll make this suit more useful. Currently, it's not that useful because of several limiting factors that is plaguing this suit. But people gravitate toward the suit anyway, which is all right. I think Xeon players tend to be more that they gravitate toward suits, uh, not because they're stat-wise good. But because they look cool. The Vincent Gelgu looks cool. To most people. To me, it looks okay. I think it's got too much junk on its on its legs. It's just too I don't know, Baroque. <laughs> just too much clutter on its legs to to bring it to cool level in my eyes, but it's got an antenna. It's cool. It's a, this is one of them suits I, I would try if it was, like, easy to get, but it's not. And it's rental sucks. Anyway, uh, let's move on to more exciting things, like the Sharzaku. This... This makes me brim with... all levels of excitement. You can hear it in my voice. Um... <laughs> it's... Dash Attack animation and hitbox will be edited. We won't know how so until post-patch, but this could be awesome things for Sharzaku. Currently Sharzaku's melee completely suck. I can only hit with it through just sheer hard work practicing with it relentlessly. And uh, hitting it uh, involves maybe like only against suits that aren't moving. Suits that I stun with the bazooka. If the target is moving, currently you're not hitting with Shar's kick. It's impossible. Because they can see it and they'll dodge it. Like, it, if you're in a, like, dogfight with an enemy that is looking at you with Sharzaku and you have your axe out, they'll just do this. And <laughs> you won't hit him. And they'll do this while they're pee pooing with his beams. While you try to line up a kick and then you'll miss and then you'll, like, I don't know slap you and then you die because Shar has no armor. I don't know, maybe maybe this kick the uh, they might add a hitbox to like the like when he kicks uh, around his leg is like a like a like a wave effect. That's what I would call it. This white stuff that surrounds his leg like you know like that windish effect. Maybe they'll add a hitbox to that. That'll be awesome. We can only hope. 
Alright, the Zogok is getting a new weapon. This is interesting. The, uh... The repeater boomerang cutter. Or automatic boomerang cutter. Will be added to its list of weapons. Uh, the Zogok right now, its boomerang cutter functions like a missile. Like a missile launcher. You lock on and the missiles track and they hit things. Uh, track poorly. They track more poorly than missiles. But it doesn't have an explosive radius. If it touches, if it makes contact with the enemy, the boomerangs, it deals full damage. That's its good thing. The bad thing is that it, if the enemy is like, if the enemy sees the boomerangs coming, and they have the boost cap, they'll just dodge it. But I think this addition is uh, addressing an issue with the Zogok not having enough weaponry. Uh, it doesn't have any kind of direct fire. Uh, steady damage type weapon, like you know, like a machine gun, for example, or a beam rifle. The Zogok does not have any of these things. It's got it's got missiles. Its gold print's got a stern falls, which you can only fire so many times. You can't reload it, and it's got grenades and like melee. You know, it's missing that weapon type that most other assaults have, which is like an automatic or even a semi-automatic uh, steady damage dealing weapon. So I think. This boomerang cutter, this automatic boomerang cutter, might act like a, uh, I think something akin to uh, like uh, Ken's uh, needle missiles, All right? So I think the Zogok might be like another suit that'll function like a Gan. The Gan can, uh, uh, its gold print has the tracking missiles, needle missiles. Its silver print has the just the direct fire beam rifle-like missiles. And Zogok is kind of getting the same treatment. Kind of, that's good. That, in that case, I might be able to field a Silver Prince Zogok. Silver Prince Zogoks are worthless because they don't get Stern Falls. But if they're getting some kind of direct fire weapon, I, I might be able to use it. Because then you can, like, do homing boomerang cutter and then insta switch to, to this repeater boomerang cutter, and then while the enemy is dodging you, you could pound them with, the, with this weapon. You know, combo. And if they, like, try to dodge your your repeater boomerang cutter, then they might turn into your homing boomerangs. Uh, so weapon combos are being made possible, maybe, with the Zogok post-patch. We'll see. The Zogok E is also getting a new weapon. All these Zeons is getting a new weapon. This is exciting. He is getting a beam shotgun added to his list of weapons. That's awesome. But it does. It will not benefit from the beam shooter tree. That is not awesome. That is deflating penis. Uh, I'm not sure if it needs a beam shotgun, but fuck. I mean, I'm not complaining. <laughs> uh, the Zogok has decent melee compared to like other Zion amphibious suits. Uh, it's got like this nice giant frontal hitbox. It's wide. Right. Um, and But the problem is the Zogok E is too big. It's fat to engage in close range combat, like especially with this shotgun type weapon. You'll... I, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I want to say you'll lose in the DPS against the thing you're shooting at because they have an easier time hitting you. But a shotgun might make a difference. But, like, normally, you'd be just meleeing the guy because Zugaki has decent melee if you get that close to an enemy. Because that, that'll end things quickly. But, I don't know, maybe, uh. You might use the shotgun instead of its uh, regular beam weapon. Because you need a gold print Zugaki to get the fully automatic beam gun, like a particle cannon. Silver Prince don't get this, but if the Silver Prince are getting a shotgun, maybe you can go shotgun, melee, and missiles. Maybe you can stun with the shotgun and then smash him in the face with your claws. That'd be pretty cool. So now Tsugake... Alright, so the first production... The first mass production Galgoog. So what's the first Galgoog released in the game? Is he getting the same changes as, as its... Uh, 
beam rifle toting uh, Federation rival, the prototype Gundam. So its beam rifle weapons is getting more damage reload time, or it's getting Im improvements on damage reload time and range, but is getting his uh, max ammunition cap reduced, uh, along with his fully automatic beam rifles. The same changes. Okay. Uh, the Black Tristar Zaku 2. It's uh, dual bazookas. We'll be dealing more damage. Yay! That might make it possible for uh, two hit knockdowns. Uh, something that the uh, the Kemper can do. Uh, what was stupid about like the Black Tristar's dual bazooka is that even though it's a heavy class. Assault suits that get dual bazookas has dual bazookas that deals more damage. That doesn't make sense. Why does a heavy variant dual bazooka not deal more damage than an assault variant? I don't care because I don't I I, I, I don't want to hear because the assault classes that carries the dual bazookas cost more than the black tricer black or the black tricer You know because in that case then maybe both should deal the same amount of damage. The fact that assault classes are getting dual bazookas, uh, you know, makes it a high high cost suit, and uh, you know, that should be on par with a with a mid cost heavy type heavy class that gets a dual bazooka. But yeah, currently uh, it's hard to hit with this thing. Like it's hard to hit directly. It's hard to land direct hits with this weapon. You usually maybe end up dealing the splash, and and uh, the the splash damage dissipates pretty fast, like exponentially, as you you know as you go f further from what you were targeting. I mean, you know, as, as the, the, the 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 location of of where the shot lands is further from what you're aiming at, and. Uh, even if the shot missed by like like a centimeter, the damage usually is not enough to stun the enemy, and you need you need to get another stun worth of damage while your opponent is in stun animation from your initial hit to knock the guy down. The Black Tricarzaku, it's really hard to do with his double bazookas because it doesn't deal enough damage. No, it might. Uh, we'll be experimenting post patch after looking at the numbers. Okay, uh, the Gundam prototype unit two, the GPO two, is wow, interesting changes. Uh... Okay. Uh... What is it called? The beam bazooka. Uh, the, the the what the, the the not exploding beam bazooka. The beam bazooka output focus type. The beam bazooka focus beam type. The beam bazooka focus type. You know, the beam bazooka that doesn't function like a bazooka type. Uh, it's firing mode will be changed from semi-auto to full auto. <laughs> so now that beam bazooka is going to be firing, firing fully automatic beams. That, I'm not sure if that's good or bad. I wonder if the stats will be the same. It doesn't say anything about changing in stats. The saying that its firing mode will be changed. If it could retain the same amount of accuracy of a semi-automatic weapon, fully auto, that might make this more useful. But I'm not sure if it. I'm not sure if making the beam bazooka focus type fully automatic is going to address its. Its. Uh, what's that word? Uh, impotency. Is that the proper word? 
Um, the only beam was a good focus type I use is type F, because it deals a lot of damage. But it's hard to justify using the, the GPO2 and the focus beam type F uh, over other suits that are cheaper that DPS wise can deal as much damage as it like it like a fully automatic beam rifle for example I think can deal more damage not sure but you know you still have to like aim with this type F weapon and hit things with it or well, the full automatic weapons you know beam rifles can just kind of spam and lead and freaking make the thing you're shooting at panic and move predictably and stuff but you know, maybe well, now this is being made automatic, so it might um, now become on par with fully automatic beam rifles. It might exceed it in effectiveness because the beam bazooka focus type generally deals more damage per shot than fully automatic beam rifles that other suits might carry. Because I mean, this is a fucking bazooka. Now it's fine fully automatic beams. So we'll see. Also, it's firing motion will be changed. I wasn't even aware it had a firing motion. I'm guessing because it's being made automatic, automatic. It's it doesn't like. I think I think when it fired its beam bazooka, it like tilted it up, you know, per shot, like like as if it's faking recoil for me beam weapon. <laughs> uh, I, I'm I'm gonna guess that'll be removed because uh, I don't, that'll look silly. It like jiggling its beam bazooka while it's firing it. But it's also saying that the exploding beam bazooka will get its firing animation changed. What firing animation? Uh, maybe... Maybe they're removing recovery frames from aftershot to bring up the shield faster? That'll be nice. Yeah, same thing, Atomic Bazooka's firing animation will be changed. Guess we'll have to find out what this firing animation is post-match. Maybe I'll go into the game and find out myself. Okay, then. Right, so like the grenade launcher to machine gun. Changing from the Beam Bazooka focus type to the Beam Bazooka exploding type will have no weapon switch animation. Good. That means that uh, you don't need to have a, uh, a head falcon equipped to instant switch to shield, right? If you just go from beam bazooka focus type to beam bazooka exploding type, with you know after the patch, uh, switching to either or will insta bring up your shield to defend. That's good. Okay, next up is the peasant watch, right? Uh, it's uh, eight shot uh, accordion missile pod, and it's eight, eight. Um, Shot 420mm rocket, accordion pod, cannon. There will be no weapon switch between them because both weapons are on that single accordion shaped platform. It looks like an accordion to me. Looks like a big uh, uh, round, rotund uh, Scandinavian man with a mono eye. Roller skating with an accordion. That's what the peasant to watch looks like to me when it's got that missile pod equipped. So I, don't know, I just can't help it but call it an accordion. But anyway, so weapon switch will be removed. That's good. Except that it still takes forever to draw out the missile pod in the first place. I don't know, I guess I can't explain. I can't uh, complain. The Galguk M Shima Garahal custom. It's a uh, MNG-110 beam rifle. Its rate of fire will be improved. And they'll change the weapon's, like, beam effect. Uh, her beam rifle fires her beams pretty fast already. Problem is, they still don't do enough damage currently, in my opinion, and in the opinion of other people that tried to use it. Uh, like, fully automatic beam from a Gundam will easily out-DPS your Shima Galgug beam rifle. Uh, not only because each shot deals less damage, but because Shima, Shima's beam rifle doesn't have the same lock-on. It 
lock-ons. Lock-on is horrible. Lock-on stat. But, I don't know. It might be interesting how fast this thing will fire now. Maybe it'll, it can uh, keep up with the DPS race of uh, regular fully automatic beam rifle weapons. Guess we'll find out. This is saying, um, we've made these changes, taking into consideration the usage rate of suits, uh, weapons, uh, kills with the weapons, basically the statistic of usage and kill rates of suits and weapons combined were used to make the, the, these decisions and what, what changes to make, is what the dev team is saying here. Uh, for more details on the changes, uh, the more details on the changes will be released on after update day. Mobile Suit Gun Gundam Online team. Okay, so that, that was it. That was an hour and 11 minutes. That's a whole lot of ones. Wow, I just looked at my uh, recorded time and it was all ones. One hour, 11 minutes, 11 seconds. Crazy. And uh, I want to go to bed now. Um, so I am. Before I do, I will say that, um, you know, when those uh, hard numbers are released, I might go through them. But it, hopefully it won't take more than... It won't take an hour and 11 minutes to explain through everything. Most likely not, because I've explained to what the changes are here. So, you know, it'll just be like an add-on. I think doing these videos will be is easier and having to type all that shit out. Maybe I'll do this from now on. Um, that way, <laughs> that way, uh, these major updates aren't, uh, you know, uh, available only to those that are, I guess, quote unquote, subscribed in the chat room I've made for folks that play this game. Though I'm, it's it's not like a freaking uh, exclusive club or anything. It's just I, I I'll invite anybody that plays. I, I even you know uh, advertise it in the, in the uh, you know in the game and stuff. Um, so you know if you're watching this and you want to end, you know just let, just give me a PM and I'll I'll let you in. Uh, but anyway, so right, right, so this was that. This was uh, an update log for a major patch of sorts. And uh, I suppose maybe you could look forward to more of these in the future, you know, when major updates are, uh, are announced. Because it's easier for me, and it's probably more convenient for you. Maybe. You can't skim through words this way, unfortunately. But, uh, I don't know. Maybe, like, instead of having to keep your eyes on the screen to read, you can, like, Listen to it on on a, on, a, you know, on a train ride from work or you know while you're driving in your car and you've got your iPod going. You can listen to the balance changes because <laughs> that's what you want. You know, driving you know while you're trying to go on a nice joy ride on your car is to freaking listen to shit about Gundam Online because that don't add stress. Alright, I'm, 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 I'm going to go to bed. I'm tired. I will see you guys in another video somewhere uh, in the future. Okay, bye.